Straw Hut Media. Cheerio. Did you say Cheerio because our guest was born and raised in London? I don't know. Maybe. No. I was going to say Jollyo, but I don't think that's real. I don't, so think, I don't think that's a thing. No, it's I Cheerio. I don't think that's a thing. Uh, we have an amazing guest today. Um, Ian, you have probably seen all over TikTok. Uh-huh. Uh, f- uh, full transparency. Actually, hold on. Let me, me read some things from your bio first before we get into the full to transparency. Get it right. Um, But they're an actor. They performed on Broadway. Um, they've been in both film and TV, like Rock of Ages, Step Up Revolution and Mozart in the Jungle, One Life to Live, respectively. Did you pronounce it Mozart? Uh, Mozart. Mozart. Uh, Mozart? Mozart, I oh. think. I don't know. I always said Mozart, but you know, I'm from Atlanta. <laughs> um, and then also, uh, there's a few episodes of Lip Sync Battle, Dancing with the Stars, and SNL sprinkled in there. I love this Come bio, by on. the way. Uh, but he really started to gain traction on TikTok in April of 2020, which, by the way, so many people uh, blew timing. up yeah. in that March to April range when people, you know, were finding things to do when they were quarantined. I was in the corner crying at the bottle of red wine and the red box wine of and cheese. It. I know. If you listen to the podcast, you know AJ my favorite loved thing. his red wine and cheese. But anyway, well. Welcome to the pod, Ian Padgett. Confess your mess. You guys, if I, if there was a class on like banter and like how to like yes and, I would say this was like, this is the banter 101 class that I just <laughs> witnessed. Between That's one of the three. biggest compliments really, I think we've ever received. Because we've actually taken classes on that. It's actually, we met a hundred years ago taking classes. Well, we didn't meet there, but we started yeah. taking classes together. But but really, it's more of a bicker. It's more of a, yes. less of a banter and more of a bicker sometimes. It's like a, yeah, yes, sort of, and. Because, mm-hmm. you know, we're getting married. And also, so. we're super sassy today because you you know, because I told you before we started the pod, I got four hours of sleep last night. Mm. So you're getting a special breed of a meal today. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How did you, why only four hours? What was, <clears throat> tell us. You know, sometimes life happens and you have things on your mind and you can't fall asleep and then you do fall asleep and then your partner leaves in the morning. I and- think I kind of want to take a little bit of blame for this because yesterday, so I was just in a mood and I don't know what was going on. On. I was I was Drain. second guessing every single choice in my life, my career, my ability to even do anything. And I was like, I think I'm I, I'm a fraud. I'm a big fraud. I was having some imposter syndrome. And I, I kind of think I brought my partner down a little bit. Mm. And then he was worried about me. So I don't think he slept that well. And then I got up for work as I do every weekday. Uh, I host a morning radio show. So I'm at work at 5 a.m. every day. And sometimes I wake him up on accident, but I always give him a kiss before I leave. You do usually just on the shoulder, or sometimes I'll just kiss a random pillow because it's dark and I can't see him. A, non, a, non, I, a sort of non-invasive kiss. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, if I wake him up, it's that's a whole different story. I felt the kiss this morning, so I, I sorry when he was leaving, and I didn't fall back asleep after. But it's fine. I'll take a nap after this podcast. <laughs> but we're so happy to have you here. Let, let's let's quickly before we you know get into the show. If you is this your first time listening, this is Confess Your Mess. Welcome. Um, so on this podcast, we get listener submitted secrets and people confess to us and we break down these secrets uh with our special guest today mm-hmm. it's ian that's right um so ian you know you got famous on tiktok with your ex and you got more famous yeah more famous <laughs> well we'll definitely uh we're gonna get into kind of your breakup in, in your life after because it was a very public breakup you guys were trending and uh, full transparency we didn't know of you and chris before meeting you at Queerties the other night, um, just because we we don't really get on TikTok like yeah, that. Yeah, we're not on there as much. Yeah, but we we are gonna get in all that. Um, but before we do that, you know, this podcast is about secrets. Mm-hmm. So AJ, why don't you kick it off <laughs> with our first segment? Okay, so in order to trust you, uh, because we're just still getting to know you, right? In order to trust you with our messengers' confessions, uh, this is not well, the big secret that you brought that you're gonna share with us at the end of the pod. This is like a little teeny tiny secret. This is more of a vice, a bad habit. Maybe a person or something that you just not have not been able to say no to over the years. Maybe it's that person you still, you know, dial late night after you've had a couple of cocktails. Maybe it's still that snack that you, you know, you have when you know you shouldn't, but you just can't say no to it. The this snack is, that smiles yeah, back. Yeah, the snack that smiles back. That's Emil's nickname. He's not a, he's not a snack. He's a meal. Um, <laughs> this is your mess, but yes. yes. Ooh. Okay. Um, I hate being in the hot seat, but I love it at the same time. <laughs> so a bad habit of mine is saying I have habits and then not keep going through with them. Like, I'll be like, I'm doing this thing right now. It's like that. Fe- I'll do it like once or twice. Right. I'll feel really good about it. Talk to my friends and like get the validation. I'm like, oh, yeah, like, that's great. I don't need people to tell me I'm amazing. But just like, yes, yes. Like you just said, like work. And then like after that kind of dies 
And I just like sometimes go like, okay, next thing. I ju- it's not even that I don't want to do it because I got the validation, but there's this kind of like, oh, I found the joy in it. I did it. On to the next, if that yeah. makes any sense. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's it's very that for me. Like I will start a thing because I think it's what will make me feel better. It oh. does. I feel that it does what it does for me. And like, perfect example. I'll, I'll give you an example. I yes. started um, being pretty conscious about like my morning routine because like anyone, I think after a breakup, like, I don't know for me, I, I just felt very restless and kind of like, what is my life? And like, you feel like a death. There's like a death that kind of mm-hmm. happens. And like chemically, your body kind of goes through this withdrawal of an energy and space, you literal space and like chemical sharing of energy that you were having with this person. And so my mornings were like a little rough there for like a while. And so I was like, okay, how can I set some routine to help me just like get my bearings? And so I started doing this like 11 minute calm app, like morning stretch situation just to like wake my body up. And as a dancer, I was just like, this will be just nice to like give myself this 11 minutes. It's 11 minutes. Like it's fine. I can stare out into the beautiful balcony that I have. And then like, I was like, I wonder how long I will keep this up. Like I just knew that even starting, I was like, I'm going to do this. And then I'd say like 10 days in, I was like, okay, like work. Like she did it. You know what I mean? Like I did my do and like, you just kind of fall off of it because you're like, it served its purpose and I am feeling better. And I think like, I actually think that's one of my, like, uh, like one of the things I like about myself is that I will find something that brings me the joy. And then once it doesn't anymore, I just move on from it. Listen, you're the first person who's ever turned your mess, but yes, into like a, like an uplifting moment. Where yeah. you're like, but I also I'm proud of it. So there's that. Right. And I revisit it, you know, I get back to her. It's, but it's just like, it's maybe not as consistent. Okay. What, consistency. You're, yeah. you're inconsistent. I, you're consistently, I, am in, I am consistently inconsistent. inconsistent. That is for oh, sure. Oh my God. Is that Fra- the title? Frank, there's the title. Consistently of the inconsistent <laughs> with Ian Paget. Perfect. Uh, okay. Listen. So our uh, secret theme for this week, every single week we do a different theme for our secrets. This week we're doing uh, relationship secrets. Um, is it queer oh, relationship gosh. secrets or is it just relationship secrets? Frank? Let's just say relationship because okay. at this point it's 2022. Okay. But it is queer relationship secrets. Yeah, well, relationships. Okay. Well, I'm sure that in the secrets, it's probably going to be something queer related. So we're going to say queer relationship sure. secrets. Sure. And if you're just like a normal human being and you don't know who you are yet and you might be queer and you might not be queer, don't stop listening just because of that title. And so that let's, is fine. But let's, bump, bump, let's know what, get, AJ? Oh, you can't talk. Huh? You're I'm a little so, flustered. I'm let's just, get into the first secret, Emil. Wow. This is from Anonymous Work. Male, Texas. Okay. They said, I accidentally found my boyfriend's. Okay, so yeah, anonymous male Texas. I actually found my boyfriend's old diary from a couple years back and read it like an asshole. In a few entries, he wrote intimately about his ex girlfriend. He's since come out, and I got so jealous. I tore those pages out and threw them in the trash. Mm. He still doesn't know, and I'm so scared to tell him. It's so weird. I don't get jealous hearing about the past guys he's hooked up with, but for some reason, knowing he once had a girlfriend makes me so insecure. I'll never be able to offer to him what she offered because I'm a dude. I feel like such a person i don't want him to break up with me over this help so that almost sounds like queer and straight relationships going on in one the very first it, it secret. sounds like so he said wild. that the guy came out and weird. so he's out and proud now so they're weird. both gay but go off sis uh-huh wow i feel like that was really layered i didn't expect that's an interesting thing that the the, the ex-girlfriend is what's bringing up insecurity in him mm-hmm. you know like i i'm so cur- i'm genuinely curious about but he said it. He's like, I just have a fear that I maybe wouldn't be able to offer what she offered. And that tells me that maybe the pages were very intimate and emotional and like, mm-hmm. like kind of soul bearing about that experience. And mm. I don't think it has anything to do with her. And I think it's just all, all bringing it back to our, you know, our confessors own fear that they're possibly just not enough, you know? Right. Mm-hmm. I and let's call them our confessor. Yeah, we call our confessors our messengers. Oh, um, messengers! So our messengers me. bringing yeah. them bringing the mess. Oh, no, is what they're doing. I will <laughs> say, uh, I will say, because you're not revealing this, but AJ did find something in our early years from my past. That's why he's starting this, so I won't that reveal sh- it. That sure is why I'm starting because <laughs> he tells every bit of my business on this podcast. Um, but he did find something from my past, and, and if you listen to the podcast, you know that I uh, am not a platinum star gay like AJ. Nope. I did mess around with some girls before I came out of the closet, and maybe insecure. 
Yeah. Um, when but, we first started dating. But I, I think it's all about the conversation. So, you know, with us, we've been together for almost a decade now. And at the time, you know, we were still building our relationship. But we did like it, when he discovered that it could have gone left really fast. We had yeah. like an honest, open conversation about it. I think if you found these intimate pages and you tore them out, there is a chance that your boyfriend We'll never know because I don't really go back and look at old journal entries from like when I just like Ian <laughs> talked about how he starts habits. I had a, a habit of doing the journal for a little bit and it stopped after a couple of weeks. Yeah. But I don't go back and look at those journal pages. I will say, though, that I can relate to this one. I can relate to the being jealous of the thing that you can't provide. Yeah, that makes sense to me. And I think that early on with you, my issue was also that you were in the closet when we met. And I'm mm -hmm. the first person you've ever gone on the date with mm -hmm. the first and only person. Mm -hmm. And I put a ring on it. Turned out very differently than I expected it to, though. Early on, I dated, I've dated hundreds of men. Do you have to tell that every single episode? Hundreds. I just like to remind you sometimes. I but know. no, I think that would still be, the, <laughs> that would be harder for me if, if, if you came to me and yeah. said, uh, I, 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 on full transparency, it would be harder for me if you said that you're into a woman, you find a woman attractive, mm -hmm. than if you said to me that you slept with another man. I think the, the female thing would, would, trigger me more than another man and why i'm so like because i because i i the way i look at it is so you couldn't date someone who was bisexual no i'm not saying that i'm saying you okay i'm saying you and i because i know you and i mm -hmm. have uh, an emotional connection that is not going to be touched i'm not worried about our emotional connection got it right if there was a physical thing that you needed somewhere else that would take some time for me to process and work through if it was something that i couldn't offer you right now because we also we're, we're a monogamous relationship mm -hmm. and that's just what we've chosen for ourselves and it works right uh, a female though like a male or a female can't offer you something emotionally different than i can like i can be open and create space to have conversations with you and then go deep when we've done that physically a female can offer you things that i just cannot offer you so that would like trigger insecurities in me it would lead to a lot of conversations and maybe some therapy but it would trigger something okay which that's is it. You, like, sorry to interrupt, but like, it's so funny because, and by funny, I mean, interesting, because you would, th one would think that like, because she is a, a, a complete different gender than you. It'd be easier to say, yeah. Right. And so, no. and so like, when you know, I don't have that body and she literally can provide a thing that is very different from me. It makes me want to know, like, it makes me curious about. Does it bring up a fear of like, if you pick that person over me, like I'm, I'm actually, I wouldn't, I'm not gonna put words in your mouth, but like, what do we think that stems from? It, like the insecurity think, around that. I think it feels to me like I can't compete with that. Mm -hmm. Like on one hand, you could look at it and you could definitely say, and I could understand this thought process. You could be like, well, there's nothing I could have done. That's not on me. So I can't feel bad about that because you want a totally different direction, mm -hmm. right? I would be so devastated that I had the potential of you losing you in this scenario only is what I'm talking about, that I think I would be more along the lines of, I don't, there's nothing I can do to compete I guess, right I guess now. where I get confused is it's not a competition if that person's in the past, because whether it's a male or a female. I'm not saying it's a competition necessarily. No, I'm but you just say you can't compete. I would, that's, no. I, I'm saying, I said insecurities would come up. You know, I, I, mean, I wonder, I wonder if for our uh, messenger slash confessor and like maybe yes. even for AJ that like it brings up the fear that maybe you would go back to that because you've already had that. So like, mm. like with the mm -hmm. messenger, right? Reading those pages, you're like, oh, this was a person I didn't know then. You're, this was, these were. Yeah, I don't know that person. I have no right. control over that person. Right. That, and like, so of course it me. feels unknown. It feels like this whole other, like, I didn't know you. Like, it's essentially like I wouldn't have known AJ when he was, you know, straight yeah. at the time. Mm -hmm. And so you, I feel like it brings up, I don't know, like this possible other person that isn't with you anymore, but is still with you. And then the fear is like, could they ever go back to that? And so yeah, well, that changes yeah, also, a little bit of trust or I don't know. I don't know. I've what, never, you know, I've also never been with a woman. And that's yeah. different. You have, I have not. Well, so I for me, I that's just like, I, I don't know. For, and we had a conversation and I can't publicly say why he never has to worry about that. And I also can't say, I can't say a lot of things about like the situation who I was back then. Um, God, I'm making it sound like it's something bad. It's not, it's but terrible. I, I'm still no, friends with some private. of those people. It's, yeah. And yeah. so there was a lot of uh, things I was battling internally. I, I was gay and just mm -hmm. trying to figure myself out and. And out of respect. Like yeah. we, we care about that person. Um, 
persons. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, it yeah. It's to our messenger confessor, I think that uh, we all gave some some good yeah. And tips, also, tips don't and advice. don't get into somebody's journal. That's just yeah. that, that, that I and have if, a problem with. If you do though, don't tear out the pages because you made it more complicated. Because if, if you yeah. would have just kept it in there and not torn out the pages, not judging you. Although I will but, say, but if you would have just kept the pages in there, you could have like been upset and processed that, and then once you got yeah. over it, because you will get over it, the pages will still be there, and you would never have to tell your partner that you looked at the pages. I have read text messages twice in my entire life, two different relationships, and both times, the two times I did it, I found out they were cheating on me. Mm. And that's the, as far as I know, the only two times I've ever been cheated on that I know of. And both times, my gut just told me something's going on. They're lying to me. You so... want to check my text? I was texting mom this morning. <laughs> Your mom texted <laughs> like, me more specifically text you. though, like with this messenger. I I'm gonna go ahead and even give like another sort of moment of advice that like even though you still tore out the pages, you can still you can change your mind. First off, I'm a big big proponent of this. Like you can change your mind any day, any time, and like be a new person, be the person you want to be starting now. Right. So even though you've turned like tore out these pages, you can still go to your partner and be yeah. like, hey, and this is coming from someone who has a really hard time, like truly sharing how I feel and asking for what I need in the moment, like real time kind of um, communication for me. Like I avoid like the plague. It's just it's a thing I learned in my house. And so like that's something I'm working on in therapy. So I fully understand that plight. And with that. I would say though, like if you can, if you have enough trust with your partner to share that you did find this journal and that you yeah. did read it and that it did bring up some <laughs> in you and that you tore these pages out and it's wild, but you get a moment to share with your partner, you right mm -hmm. there. There was a version of me that did this thing and I'm not, not like I'm mad, but it brought up jealousy. It brought up an insecurity and I just feel like you need to know because one, I did kind of read something that wasn't for me. It was very personal. Mm -hmm. And like, I'm not mad about what you wrote, but it brought up things in me that I think moving forward, like I, I, I trust that you would maybe be able to help um, like diffuse. And like, you would hope that the partner supports and like, after they take their moment can go, I didn't really love that. But also they might actually just make you feel better. Yeah, That's they might. And they might have a. They might be like, "Listen, I was also processing things too." Yeah, and I'm in a different place now, so let's talk exactly. about it. I like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I yeah. That, I think that take that advice. Take that advice for sure. But let's take a quick break and come right back. All right, welcome back to Confess Your Mess. We got Ian Paget on the pod today. Super excited to have you here, Ian. Uh, we love you on TikTok, uh, and and we're we're grateful that you've made space for us yes yeah <laughs> okay our next secret comes from anonymous male oakland they said my boyfriend and i are on the dl and i want to tell people we're gay and in a relationship but he's not ready is it if i at least tell one of my friends or is that breaking trust i'm, a, go I'm gonna just go in right here because it's the first thing that pops in my head whenever questions like that arise with friends of mine we have like specifically two best friends it's like the answer is in the question is what I always kind of say. Um, you can take that advice or truly leave it and be like, I'm still asking the question. I want someone else to give me a different answer. That's <laughs> totally fine. Um, but like, if you have to ask, like, eh, is it okay if I like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, you already know. You already yeah. kind of know. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's a, yeah, go ahead. Friends can be pretty amazing. Right. Yeah. If you have a couple of really good ones in your life, talk and you can trust them. Talk to your friend. Mm. I would say talk to your friend and say, "Listen, they're not ready, but that doesn't mean that that friend's going to go tell a single person. But they need to know, and I think you need to be able to talk to somebody because if you can't talk to your partner, there has to be somebody in your life that you can go to and work through it. Right. And I had, I have an ex actually that I talked through a lot of stuff with like we were not really great at a relationship he just gives really great advice and he's like a vault he keeps every single secret in the world and when you and I were going through stuff Emil and I broke up one time for eight hours many 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 years ago mm -hmm. <laughs> it was like eight years ago and I was very dramatic and, and got him back he sure was and a fetal position in the bathroom crying okay first of all first of all, first of all we are not gonna reinvent this narrative I was never fetal position yeah, or crying in the bathroom totally were. I was on the phone with my cousin in the doorway while what he was in the is, living room so he could hear me yeah, crying, but yeah. I was never in a fetal position in yeah. the bathroom. So, and I was at my ex's. I went to my ex's. <laughs> one of the one of the ones who I just told you about who cheated on me. And I went to him for advice. And I said, what do I but do? But it was nothing to worry about. They're not. 
No, no, not like yeah. that. It never was. But I was like, what do I do? I need really solid advice. You know me better than anybody else. Am I being crazy right now? Well, that, yeah, I get that. But I uh, so I agree and disagree. And I, I think the reason why is in, in their question, they said, is it breaking their trust? I can go to a friend. If we're both on the DL. If we, me and you were both on the DL, I don't mind me going to a friend and saying, I'm comfortable. Hey, uh, Jenna, because the first friend I ever came out to is my best friend, Jenna. Hey, Jenna, I'm gay. I need to tell somebody I'm going through this and we can bond over that. We don't know their situation because if this person is also in their friend group, I think it's it's not fair to out somebody, even if that is one of your close friends to out somebody who's not ready to be outed. And like, you don't know this. It's like, we don't know the situation. We don't know the context of like where they live. If it's family, like how much of the friend group is, is like around them all the time. And like, there's. Okay. So I think I'm hearing this differently. So. I think I'm actually saying the same thing as you. I think what I'm trying to say is I think it's okay to go talk to your friend that you're in this situation and let them know that you're with somebody who's closeted. I don't necessarily, I didn't necessarily mean to out that person. Oh, you don't, okay, I mean okay, okay. to talk to them about being with somebody who's not out. I think oh, that is oh, something yeah, yeah, you can talk yeah. to Oh, I see, I see. That, I'm, okay, not trying to, I'm not trying to go out people. Oh, okay, yeah, no, yeah, no, no, yeah. no, I'm not trying to be like, oh, I'm, I'm f***ing Bob over here. And not you, Bob. You're right. friends with him and you, everybody, Bob. everybody. <laughs> Bob? I, I, I don't see, think anybody's yeah. ever f***ed a Bob before, have they? I haven't f***ed a Bob. I haven't. Have you, Ian? <laughs> Have I ever talked to Bob? Sorry, I literally was like trying to go through like, so, like what else could this person do? Like what are the ways? I was literally trying to go through like- Well, also, also on a deeper level, that sounds like you, I think the real issue is that you're at a place where you want to be out and proud in your relationship mm -hmm. and sl slowly start to come out of the closet as a couple. And the person you're with is not ready to do that. So the next question is, are you comfortable spending more time in the closet with that person than for that person? And if that's not enough for you, there's a deeper conversation that needs to take place with that person. Because you mm -hmm. might, it just might not be the relationship for you right now. Yeah. And yeah, they might that's... not come out for, you know, he was in the closet when I met him. And yeah, that we was went really through difficult. That. Yeah. And we had a come we were, we were talking, we, we were friends first. We became mm -hmm. really good friends. And then we started, uh. Doing some things. We started doing some things. And then uh, he, we didn't like actually start dating because we had a serious conversation one time. He said, you know, I really like you. I really do. But like, I don't know if I can go through the whole process of dealing with someone who's in the closet. My dad's a pastor. My mom's super religious. My family's like, it was just His a family, lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so he had that conversation with me and I had to, I had to sit with that. We weren't living together at the time. I was over his place all the time, but I went back to my place and I remember I sat there and I had to really think about, okay, what am I going to do? And I thought about it for the next couple of weeks. And eventually I did come out and I did that because I didn't want to lose him. Yeah. Cause I'd already been through it. I didn't want to do it again. Yeah. I, 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 I did the hard part for myself. I didn't want, I could be there to support him, but I wasn't going to go back in a closet. And I'm not saying to this uh, messenger, I'm not saying to uh, threaten your partner to leave them. No. That's not the thing, but it does need to be a conversation of, I am truly ready to come out in some capacity and I want you to be on that journey with me. And your partner might say, hey, I really care about you too. I just don't see a way forward right now. Mm -hmm. I'm going to need a little bit more time. Can you give me that? If you would have said to me, yeah. yeah, if you would have said to me, hey, I need another six months or so. I just need to like process this. I, I care about you. I don't want to lose you, but I, I can't promise you I can do this right now. I would have had to make a decision. At least you have the information. Yeah. And I, I would have stuck with you. I yeah. would have stuck stuck it out. So maybe just have that conversation. I also think like when you like when you said, um, you know, I there's this thing I, I have to go do this for myself because I don't want to lose you. It's the thing I have to go do for myself is so that I can hopefully ho not hold on to you or keep you. There's no ownership there. Right. But so that I can feel really good about my decision when I make it so that it's mm. not just in reaction to you telling me like this, yeah. this, you know, cause I think that can happen too. Like if someone shares with me something, my empathy can kick in so much that I will, it's really interesting. Like I, I I'll avoid my own need and want to share with someone, but if they share with me, I feel very, Oh my God, like you asked this of me, like you mm. said this. And so I feel very, um, like people pleasery in the sense that like, well, I have to, yeah, no, of course. And then I think about it after, but I've already kind of said a yes, which is like terrible business and terrible. Like, it's just like not the way to do it, <laughs> but like this person. And even with your experience right now, like that you guys just shared, um, it's, it's just important to be like, what do you need? Right? Like yeah. putting on your face mask on the airplane first yes. and really setting that tone for yourself. 
will mm-hmm. one only be good for you. And two, if the other person wants to join you on that, chances are when someone sees you, listen, if you have a crush on someone and you're in a relationship and it's there and like, you know, you're, you're, you're in this relationship and you go off and do that thing for you. That's pretty attractive. I know that I think that's pretty attractive. And I, and, and there's something very, um, not noble, but you're just kind of like work. Like, I love that you're doing that for yourself. It hope maybe will motivate me, inspire me in my own time. Um, there's so nothing. Biggest, yeah. yeah. There's nothing more motivating in a relationship than seeing your partner doing stuff. Yeah. Like whatever that is, that it gives you a little bit more courage. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yes, for sure. Okay, so we have two more secrets before we get to your secret. But before we get into that, um, like we touched on it earlier, but you had a, a pretty public breakup, and you know we're doing relationship secrets here. So mm-hmm. what has? Wait, we're doing what? <laughs> Wow. Just relationship secrets? Wow. Cool. Full circle <laughs> moment, Because this last couple didn't necessarily identify wow. as queer either, so I'm just saying. Wow. No, they were just on a deal. You're right. Wow. Wow, well, it's amazing. You, did, you were just waiting for that moment quite for me the, to slip up. Quite the turn of events here, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, you got a smile out of me. You're cute. I am pretty cute. Anyway, back to Ian. No, but you went through a pretty public public yeah, breakup like the major outlets and you know uh we've had our relationship highlighted in different ways but we haven't had like a public breakup yeah I, the only thing i can relate to is uh getting fired from a national talk show on fox yeah, and then and publicly seen you know like variety ross and... matthews replaces aj gibson as host of hollywood stay live yeah that was difficult that was a hard little, time little kid from ohio i'm like what why did they have to do an article about this that's really humiliating to me so for you since yeah. you know it, and, and you kind of touched on this earlier, you know, and we can relate in terms of, like we said, we do content together. And so I would imagine if we were to break up, there would be a bit of, I guess, refining our own individual identity, even though mm. we have within the relationship, we're very much connected, especially after almost a decade. So for you, what has it been like post breakup? I know um, if I recall you guys did the video and kind of said like it was it was this pressure that was on you that kind of uh, caused the breakup or let or was one aspect of like the pressure of people's expectation of who you are and just oh they're perfect that's real by the way yeah. and sometimes it's why we don't create content because i i'm like this would be great but if we're arguing right now in our real world i don't want to go create a video with you right now because it drives me crazy yeah. yeah yeah so how how did you navigate all of that I mean, as best as I possibly could, we both did it as best as we possibly could. And it was just like, you know, I, I think I've said this to other friends too, that like, it just, you were, you're in a bit of a pressure cooker. It was a, a lot of new things happening at a very, very high, like speed, many, many huge live life events happened within that year. COVID happened. Mm. Chris is not going to school. He's in zoom. I'm not doing theater and acting and dancing anymore everyone's life really, really changed. And then we moved cross country and then I'm living with my partner for the first time. I've never done that before. Like there were just so many milestone, amazing moments that like, quite frankly, like I did the best I could at handling and so did he, but it just, you know, like things happen, you kind of grow together. And then you also kind of stop, stop growing with yourself because relationships are hard being in a public relationship, which was something I didn't like ask for, but it just kind of happened and brought so many amazing, beautiful things. Also, like it's, it's kind of Achilles heel, right? It's like that thing that is like so great about where it brought us and the people it was connecting us with and what it was doing for our lives in a time of such peril where people were really kind of, I think seeing us as like a glimmer of hope and, and just like an authentic real relationship. And I don't know, it just, it, there's so many cool things about it. Also, there's another side of that coin that are the the pressures of keeping that up of like, well, we're that for people, but then we're also regular humans who have to deal with our day to day and what yeah. we still need and want and how to actually communicate that, not just when a camera is on you. And like, I, it's 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 a really tough thing to have to navigate. Um, and I'm I'm I, I consider myself a pretty mature uh like with it human but like those kind of moments in life were like many like were like growing pains right like it was like you're into the woods and you're like excited and scared for anyone who understands that reference you know and it's like one of my favorite songs uh, from i think it's i think it's company and it's like sorry grateful like that those two things can live i just really believe in dualities right it's you'll always be what you always were which has nothing to do with and all to do with her. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's I, I'm speechless it, because it no, just says it all right there. It does say it all, and it's it's so fascinating to me because so this is a conversation I've had a lot of times with friends of mine who are maybe drag queens or my my best friend Michaela Gordon, my co-host at, at my radio show. She got really big on TikTok, got almost two million followers in a year doing Melania Trump impressions. And then when she stopped doing that and started to put out her content, what she wanted to be presented as, the numbers dropped off significantly. And I know that's the same with like with drag queens. If you're if you're, you know, the character, if you're Nina West, that's one thing. But if you're Andrew Levitt, that might be something different. And so did you have that insecurity sort of creep into your mind? Like as a content creator, who am I as a solo creator now? And will my audience stick around? Will they still care or did that ever cross your mind? I've never thought about the like, will the audience still care and stick around thing? I my my biggest thing that happened like throughout was we were churning out a lot of content at the beginning there, like because it was just Chris is a machine and so good at uh, he just like has the idea and he's like such a um he's just like he can make things happen so he's fast. A visionary, he's, yeah, sure. He's he's literally like he literally could be president if he wanted to be. And, um, and it's one of the things I love about him is just like, he inspires me slash makes me feel bad about myself. You know, it's like, it's yeah. inspiring, but then you're also like, God, I'm not doing that. It, it can go that route. Right. It's like, it's either work. I want to do exactly that. Or depending on your mood that day, it's why not doing that? I I'm, I'm the worst. Like I'm not as, I, I don't do the thing he does. Like he's got, and then it turns into like, maybe he'll think that I'm not as like go gettery as hit, you know, like, again, those two things live together. Right. Um, but to answer your question, the biggest thing that I, I noticed and clocked was we were making so much content and my sort of like the, 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 the craftsman in me, the, 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 the actor in me who was like having so much fun started getting self-conscious about what we were putting out because I started to kind of feel like I was a caricature of myself. Like mm. those were, I, I don't know if that's actually what it was, right? That was just my own interpretation of what was going on. I, I was starting to doubt myself. I was feeling like, well now, okay, like, am I being as funny as I can be? What is that skit? And then like, he would bring ideas. And I was like, no, 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 that, that'll that seem to, like I just started to deny and like second and push away the thing because I also recognize how quickly It can become your Achilles heel, right? That like, okay, like we're doing a lot of this thing. And I was clocking internally that like, while it was all in fun, I was like, this also just lives on the internet. And like, it forced me to be like, okay, like, wait, who, who, who am I? What Mm -hmm. am I putting out? It just brought up all of those kind of questions. And so moving forward and just like with the year, like those were a lot of things that were, um, kind of just in my mind. And I felt like froze me sometimes, you know what I mean? That's genuine. I I appreciate that answer. That's really, that's really real. And a lot of times I think people forget that uh, social media isn't the same for everybody. Mm -hmm. Content creators who are relying on social media sometimes for income uh, are very different than, you know, my friends or family back home who just post pictures of their lattes still. And that's just what it's there for. And that's fine for them. And that's great. Yeah, the lattes look good. They look great. But also to wrap your brain around the idea of like, Getting inside your head because you're like, oh, wait, honey, honey, oh, wait, let's think about this content because we just have this brand deal we're working on right now and our agent's closing down this sponsorship too. So we want to make sure we're putting out the right stuff. And then also am I being the right character Oh, it's to go, so true. It, it's so Even on many this layers podcast, like we, are, we, we have no filter in this podcast and like we're, we're hosts, we're television hosts by trade. And so we are constantly and in the back of my head i'm constantly thinking oh shit but if a really wholesome sponsor yeah. comes along and wants to start sponsoring us is that going to change change the way that we talk right but at the same time it's you know again like if only someone could have all i mean people were saying this to me too but it's just when you're in it you just can it can feel very different but like you being you will attract Track who them. wants exactly. to be with you right amen exactly mm. and so if the wholesome moment isn't going to happen for you that's fine the Period. wholesome moment will go over there and people will find the joy and like specialness and uniqueness of your banter and bickerness and be like we love the realness of this mm-hmm. do you know what i'm saying like yeah yeah, um, Hallmark's not reaching out anytime soon. Right, you attract what you put out, uh, and we are putting out amazing content with amazing guests. And we're going to take a quick break and come back. Welcome and- back, <laughs> welcome back, <laughs> welcome. This is this is me saying welcome back. You were you ready, Emil? Yeah. 
Welcome back to Confess Your Mess. That was really loud and aggressive. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you so much for joining us. We're, we're about to wrap up here. We've got, I think, one or two more secrets really quickly we're going to get through with Ian Paget, and then he's going to yeah. reveal his confession. Uh, Emil, what do you have for us? Who's coming uh, Okay, from? so this is from J Female USA. Okay. I'm with a guy who I really love, but I'm starting to think I'm gay. It sucks loving someone so deeply, but not desiring them sexually. I used to for sure, but lately only fantasize about women. Just don't want to make a decision I regret. And this is a female mm -hmm. uh, who goes by just the letter J. Yeah. I mean, you know, I think she's she's saying it. She's like, I don't want to make a decision because I'm unsure. And I'm like, so then, yeah, you, like you get a pad and paper and you ask yourself some questions. You're like, pros and cons. I, <laughs> yeah. Like, am I fantasizing about women solely on a sexual level? Am I fantasizing about do you know what I'm saying? Like, I guess you just kind of go through and you you kind of figure that out. That's first off, these confessions are deep. Real. Oh, real. Yeah, it, it gets oh, no. real. They, sometimes they're ridiculous and like lighthearted. Sometimes yeah. they're like serious. We had Yvette Nicole Brown on recently and she was like, we were talking God and Bible for a little bit. It goes yeah. all over the place, to be honest. I will say for and this person, um, uh, the other thing is I think what will help when you're getting that pen and paper and you're doing the pros and cons and just writing this out, I think maybe figuring out I don't know how long you and your boyfriend have been together, but figuring out if there was some type of trigger in your relationship that caused a uh, lack of sexual attraction to them. Like, is it just to him or is it to all men? Or are you attracted to the, in your mind, the perceived taboo of being attracted to a woman? Because that's mm -hmm. also something to explore. And, 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 and I always come back to have the conversation with your partner. It might not be easy, but what you might realize if you start getting, you know, to the bottom of some of this is you, you a couple things could happen. One, you might be a full on lesbian and you might want, you need to leave him and say, I'm so sorry. It's not you. It's it's me. Right. That could be one route, one right. avenue she takes. Or you talk to your partner and you could find out that your partner's like, hey, I'm kind of curious. I've always wanted to experiment with other women as well. Is that something you're open to doing with me? Mm -hmm. If she's happy with this partner and she feels safe and secure with this partner, but she's sexually not fully fulfilled by this partner, maybe there's an opportunity to bring another yeah, a female lot of the, into the situation. A lot of secrets live in the unknown, yes. right? And so what we try to talk about and, and exhibit with our relationship is we do have these private conversations. Even before we came up with the idea for this podcast, mm -hmm. years ago it started with us having like a, a conversation revealing our secret desires and fears and, and all these different things. This is the naked on the bed conversation. If yeah. you're one of our listeners, you've heard about it. And so, <laughs> you know, I get that it's difficult and we always are very... Um, very real and saying that it wasn't an easy conversation. No. We were crying like it was hard. But also, if you want to grow in your relationship, sometimes not sometimes you need to have those tough conversations. I'm not saying if you're like six months in, go sit naked on the bed and like reveal all these things. But maybe got, also don't put a timeline on how 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 quickly love can happen and how quickly true. an attraction can happen. And and he may also say to you, I'm just I'm not OK with that. Yeah. I'm so sorry. I love you. Go Go figure out what you need to figure out. Yeah, you some, never you, know. He, he like, may even say, okay, let's take a pause yes, and let's revisit yes, after yes. you've explored. Like, you just never know you how it's going to go. You just got to give people the information so that everybody can make the decisions that's best for them. Yeah. And, and, yeah. The best and of like a, a big thing that a friend would have, like, we share with each other is always, and, and I'm always reminded of, um, and I don't know where this came from for me, This, but it's like th this feeling that. I'll share with you maybe you, like in that first instance when I'm meeting you, it's like because I maybe don't care as much, right? Yeah. You share a little easier, easily, more easily because there's less risk and mm -hmm. you want to show that you can share. And you're mm -hmm. like, it's, it's not even show that you can share, but you're just like, I feel comfortable enough because we're connecting. And then all of a sudden what happens is like you start to date and it gets intimate and it does get closer. And then you're like, oh, wait you know a lot about me now and then it kind of shifts and then you start to it doesn't even have to get that far but maybe when you get them and you're like oh like you're into me now all of a sudden you start to care about how they see you and so therefore you care about how you're seen and then you stop not caring about who you are right and then you keep things like you kind of keep yourself i know i do this all the time and so biggest thing that i have to be reminded of from friends and and tell other people is like if the more you do that, the pattern and habit that just gets formed is you not sharing who you really are. And so they're dating someone who isn't really there, right? Or who mm -hmm. is like a, a version of you is your performed self, is your I'm trying self. And so then I would say to this person, like, 
not don't wait, but like if you have an opportunity to share in this moment, the thing that's popping up for you that makes you you in the moment, if they're not with that, you sh- it be, it would be best to know that now than <laughs> than waiting yeah. and putting it off and like possibly squashing it and and like essentially sharing a like a non authentic version of yourself. It's yes. so real, and I think what you said is so dead on because what we tend to do early in a relationship as we get to know somebody. We reveal as much as we need to to get them to be like, oh, they're open and honest with me. Mm-hmm. And then once we see like, oh, they're into me now, I don't have to keep sharing because then it flips. Yeah. Then it becomes, I can be hurt by this person. Exactly. Exactly. It's, I'm becoming more and more vulnerable. More I don't risk. need to because I've already won them over. Yeah. I've already yes. got them. So I'm going to stop now. Yeah. And that's yeah, when yeah, relationships yeah. slowly start to die. Because Ooh. I'm scared to lose them. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Getting deep, y'all. All okay. Right. Last the secret. last secret before Ian's secret. Uh, <laughs> Albert Mel, Iowa. I don't know why I was about to say Iowa. Um, what? Listen. Mozart. Mozart. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the shade. Okay. My casual hookup and I just started experimenting with food play, like whipped cream and berries and belly button vodka shots. <gasps> and it's actually super fun. I don't know why it's a secret. Just haven't divulged it yet. Okay. I got to say this. I got to say this. You're going to relate to this and you might as well. What? Remember the scene from Varsity Blues? With the whipped cream on the penis and the nipples, the hot guy. You know what I'm talking about, Ian? I, I yeah. Remember they made then not another team movie. Chris Evans did it too. But that was a spoof. I know. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Chris oh, Evans. This was with the like. I can't remember if it was Paul Walker's character. No, no, no. no it was with James Vanderbeek and um, the con. Oh What's God. his name? Ali. Ali. Uh, she's she was in that. She was Allie in Larder. obsessed with Beyonce. Yeah. Ali yeah, yeah. Larder. Ali Larder. Ali Larder. Yeah. Allie Larder. And what was the guy? Was it Scott Kahn? Was that the guy's name? He was so no, hot. No, 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 James Vanderbeek. But there wasn't the Scott Kahn in that movie too. He was, he was in that, guy. and so was Paul uh, Walker. Walker, yeah, he was so good. But oh. she did. She gave you that moment for yeah. James Vanderbeek because he all of a sudden became the new fierce quarterback. You're right. You're right. I think Scott Kahn had the scene where he you saw his butt and he put his cowboy hat over the front and ran yeah, away. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's what I remember. Well, okay, this, that was an easy secret. We don't really have a lot of commentary for that. That's great. I say explore yes. anything that you want to explore in the bedroom. Have we ever yes. done food? Uh, have we done food? I feel we well, okay. Let, really quick story, really quick, because I really want to hear in secret. Uh, we didn't do food. We did ice, and it was uh, after we, we watched Fifty Shades. Of, yes, because I told Drew oh, and Sinead yeah. and everybody, all my best girlfriends, <laughs> about this story. We watched Fifty Shades of Gray, and then AJ was like, "Oh, let's do some of that." I love so, you think I'm Christian Gray. Yeah, it, so of. let me just yeah, he's not, and he got. Uh, 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 I didn't know what he got, but he blindfolded me, mm. and then all of a sudden he starts doing Work. things. Yeah, thanks. So he literally put. I'm assuming was it just a a pair of socks in my mouth? I don't know. What was it? I think it was. And then he put ice on my nipples, and you did something. I have to text him and ask him what it was. They were cracking up on the floor laughing, but you did something, and I was like, okay, enough. Like I literally like had to push it out of my mouth like that's this is not it this is not i don't think that's how it wasn't exactly it. okay we, i didn't know if it was finish. like enough because it's too much like in a good no, way no it wasn't a good way it, yeah, he I, loves he loves professor gibson but that was just a bridge too far yeah that <laughs> well yeah anyway the 50 shades of aj did not go the way it was supposed to go got it so <laughs> okay Shady. ian we are excited before we uh even got on this podcast our producer frank texts us and they, said oh you're gonna gag yeah ian's secret they're like so, ian's secret so of like laughing emoji so we're very excited for the secret so ian paget it is now time for you to confess, confess your mess. mess i ian paget can eat a pound cake in under a minute <laughs> wait, wait what wait, what yeah <laughs> if i put nutella on it it's it's even more of a wrap if it but you know what i mean like if i yeah yeah, yeah, like yeah, a yeah, whole yeah. pound cake? Yes. Oh my god. We're talking like, you know, like We're not talking I mean, a, cup, a cupcake though. We're talking a cake. Correct. No, I'm talking like an and even like remember those ent- remember, not like they're not, they're not there anymore. Yeah. Yes. But like those entomin moments where you're yes. just like and it after like bite two, you're like, work. Okay, I'm full. You know what I mean? But <laughs> On a good night when I'm watching a thing that makes me feel good. And if I also have Nutella next to me, it's a wrap. That's it. What? Wait, okay. I love Nutella, by the way. Same. I used to it get is... the Entenmann's uh, coffee cakes, and they're so bomb. They're so, so good. 
the Wait, what? coffee cake, the coffee cakes, Entman, or the, the coffee oh, cake. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The, the yeah. powdered sugar, but a whole one in under a minute. Mm-hmm. I mean, I can't, I can't eat sweets like that in under a minute, but I can eat. I will say, if you've ever had, uh, is it Wiley Wallaby, the red licorice? Oh, those are so good. It's, it's Australian. You can get it at Target now. His friend Naz got yeah, us on recently. Naz We're Perez. Obsessed. He told me about it, and I have to confess that I uh, went to Target last night, and I got a card <gasps> uh, and some uh, sweet things for him, but I also got a huge bag of it, and I literally have like three pieces left in the bag. Oh, I ate the whole, whole bag. bag. Yes, and I meant to throw it away this morning. So you didn't know I got it, but it's still okay, under so a table. I'm curious about this, this food thing, because I, there's, there's a sort of an iconic story of me in my freshman year of college at the University of Toledo. And I had one of those Otis Spunkmeyer muffins, you know, the prepackaged ones. I love the cookies. Like a blueberry muffin, right? Okay. And okay. A, whatever. They get it at like the little convenience store in my dorm. And we were in a friend's uh, dorm room and they said, oh my God, AJ, we started timing you because you eat so slow. And we got to 49 minutes and you're only halfway through that muffin. So that's how slow I eat. So I'm the exact opposite of oh you. I just pick and pick and pick. And then the other day you said to me, <laughs> what did you say to me just recently? You said... Uh, listen, no, no, if, I say somebody, a lot of things. if it's something like if somebody could give you a million dollars or if you had to eat X amount of things before oh, you were yeah. going to die, how many do you think you could eat? And I was like, oh, it was biscuits. Oh, yeah. We went to Yardbird. Have you been to Yardbird since you're in L.A. now? No. Oh, my God. So Yardbird so is at the Beverly Center. So good. They're biscuits. They're fried chicken. They're <sighs> ribs. It's like it's like home cooked southern food. Insane. Is it on the second floor? No, it's on the bottom floor. Right the oh, bottom. Okay. If you're on Third Street, Yardbird is at Third and La Cienega. You have to go. Okay. Their so cocktails good. are incredible. Their food's amazing. Their shrimp and grits are so good. Everything's good. Not spoiled, Ooh, just amazing. Okay. Yeah, not, um, but mm-hmm. their biscuits, literally, it, it's like They're it melts heaven. in your mouth. They're and so, so I asked them, I was like, so if if somebody said, we're going to pay you $10,000 to eat as many biscuits as you can yeah, in 10 minutes, said. how yeah. many could you eat? And he was like, I don't know, like four. Was he like, was like, four? <laughs> Four biscuits in ten minutes. I could eat so many, and I was, and that was me being generous. I was thinking, really, maybe two or three. See, I would just be like, "Pay me ten thousand dollars, and we'll find out together." You know what I mean? <laughs> right. That's right. the right answer. Okay, Ian, uh, it's been a blast. Before we let you go, so first of all, now that you're in LA, are you settled? Do you like LA? What do you miss yeah, do about you New York? First off, I just want to say I like love you too. I feel so happy to have like been able to connect with you guys and just like Aww. the flow of questions and what you're asking have some, like because I've done some of these before where you're just like, oh, okay, I don't know how to you know whatever, but like these all feel like very relevant to what I'm like kind of where I'm at Aww. right now. Just like Aww. just disclaimer. Thank um, you, but really quickly, just so now, I, now drag every other podcast you've been on really quickly. Go. <laughs> who, who are you better? Well, than? I haven't I haven't been on a lot, but just like interview, you know, sometimes people ask yeah. and you're like, yeah. oh, that was out of left field. I whatever. Um, but to answer your question, I do feel more settled. I've actually been saying this a lot more in the last couple of weeks. Like, I don't I don't know. Um, I feel like I'm kind of uh, coming rediscovering and coming back to myself and the new self that's being formed at the same time. And while there's growing pains around that, it's very exciting and um, scary. Uh, but also, like, I think LA, I, I, I'm finally feeling like, oh, like, this is a home for me now, mm-hmm. you know? And I think I was holding on to New York. It uh, will always be, like, right here next to me, always wondering, because I have amazing, amazing friends who live there and, like, my tribe. I set up my life there, you know? So you you miss that. But as things feel like they're moving in with like a, like some more momentum than they were. I think now that COVID is kind of just, yeah, it's not as dire as it once was. Uh, I'm feeling a lot more hopeful, a lot more optimistic about just like who I am and like, um, yeah. And I think that just takes time. And so the adjustment period I think has like settled. Yeah, no, New York special, but LA is special too. And we usually ask our guests what their takeaway of the day was, but I think we could just say right now, so what's your takeaway of the day? And then we're going to insert that really sweet thing you just said about us, and that's perfect, and we're done. <laughs> I love it. Great. You can we use that. We adore you. We yes. definitely need to get together in the real world again yes. and actually have a little kiki. I would um, love that. And Yardbird. So fun. Yeah, no, seriously. We should it's, go to Yardbird. It's right down the It street. sounds like you guys need any excuse to go, so no. I will be your excuse. No, no, literally. What part of uh, LA are you in? I'm in, um, it's this new area. Uh, it's just just coming up right now, but it's called West Hollywood. I hate, I hate you so much. I knew you were going there. So good. So, Jay, uh, Ian Padgett, thank you so much for stopping Thank by. you. Confess your mess.
Confess Your Mess is a Straw Hut Media podcast produced by Ryan Tillotson and Frank Driscoll. Thank you so much for listening and don't forget to subscribe and share. And if you have a secret you want to share, go to confessyourmess.us to submit. Your secret could end up in the show. Ooh.